Sneezing, Cooper begins, runny nose, congestion. Meanwhile, in his ear, Roddy is making his own list. Burning fever, bloody spittle, rotting flush. Desperately, Cooper tries to tune his ghost out, but it's no use. Watery eyes, rotting flush, sinus pain, oozing eruptions in the neck, armpit, and groin. Death throes. Mrs. Vostrov stares at him. Hold on, Cooper. It's only hay fever. Are you sure you read the chapter I assigned? By this time, the entire class is laughing uproariously. Everybody stay away from what's his face. Brock hoots. You don't want to catch oozing eruptions. Red faced and humiliated, Cooper notices that Jolie is laughing along with everybody else. That's the part that really hurts. At that moment, if Roddy had a real body with a real neck, Cooper would be wringing it. I'm desolate, Roddy apologizes in the way to the gym. I accept thy rage in a he with a heavy heart. I, uh, If I understood that, I'd tell you to stuff it. Cooper retorts. Now listen, you can't come to phys ed because the phone won't fit in my shorts. You're going in the gym. You're going in the gym locker. It's not a coffin, so don't get all bent out of shape over it. I'm a spirit and I am and am without shape, Roddy tells him. I understand not thy words. Perfect, Cooper explains. You've got 48 minutes gym period to think it over. He throws open the locker room door and strides inside. Take cover. It's the guy with hay fever, comes Brock's brawling voice. More laughter rings out as Cooper disappears inside the blizzard of sweat socks. The only thing worse than being the butt of a joke is being the butt of the same joke twice. Roddy is outraged. Thou must speak up for thy honor, Cooper Vega. No, thou must do what you promised to zip it. Flushed as much with annoyance as Roddy as he is with embarrassment, he kicks his off his shoes, steps out of his jeans, and pulls on his gym shorts. When he pops out the earbud, drawing it through his long hair, Brock exclaims, Hey, what's his face as the new GX? Before Cooper can slam the locker shut, the soccer star reaches in and plucks the phone out of his pants pocket. Cooper reaches up to grab it from him, but the taller Brock holds it just beyond his grasp. What do you think he's getting on his home screen? Aiden pipes up. Maybe some of those snoozing eruptions? Give it back. Cooper leaps for the GX4000 but comes up a little short. One way to find out, Brock decides with a cruel laugh. He presses the button on Roddy's image appears. Whoa, it's some dude. Cooper can only look at on in horror. Unhand me, thou rump-fed plague sore. Roddy ac Roddy's accent rings out in a scornful tone. Thy rank smell offendeth by nostrils. I would spit on thee were thou clean enough. Dead silence falls in the locker room. Even Brock, who ordinarily has an answer for everything, is struck dumb. Cooper seizes the opportunity to snatch the phone out of Brock's limp hand. Don't you guys know 16th century insult app? You've got to get it. Here, I'll use it on myself. He holds a GX4000 up to his face, willing Roddy to understand. Insult me. Why should I behave thus, Cooper Vega? Comes the response, thou art a prince. Wouldn't you know it, Cooper complains. The server must be down. The door of the gym to the gym opens and Coach Havermeyer barks. What's the holdup in there? These ropes aren't going to climb themselves. In the babble of voices as the boys file out the locker room, Cooper uh, distinctly hears someone ask, who's Cooper Vega? Cooper waits for the door to swing shut behind them before turning back to the screen. Roddy, what did you say to him? Roddy looks pleased with himself. I spake no more than a veritable truth that he is yet yeasty fen sucked canker blossom. Thee should speak thus thyself, Cooper Vega, as it is obvious to any fool or beast. Yeah, well, it was awesome. I've never seen that big idiot at a loss for words before. Roddy nods wisely. Thy century is astonishing place, filled with miracles beyond my wildest imaginings. But thy schoolmates art a band of slack-jewed ninny hammers, fit only for the employ of a chimney sweep. Vega, Vega, balls coach Habermeyer from the gym. What are you doing in there? Baking cookies? Get a move on. As Cooper shuts the GX4000 in his locker and jogs out onto the hardwood, he reflects that for weeks he hasn't had a prayer for standing up to the seventh graders of Stratford. And along comes his boy who died 400 years ago, who puts the dreaded Brock Bumgartner in his place with a few barely understandable words. All right, I'm going to be also reading chapter seven today, so keep a lookout for those posts as well. Bye, guys. Have a good day.